mid-July, St. Mary's is invaded by men of another calling. It's the training camp of the San Francisco 49ers. A year ago, they finished last in the Western Division. Now they begin a crusade for victory. They launch it against the Cleveland Browns. Between these two teams is a rivalry dating back 20 years. That's tremendous. Team wouldn't make an inch around us to that type of play. Head coach Jack Christensen knows that an upset over the Browns and create the impetus his team needs. Hit! There we go. Hit! Hit! There we go. Low back snap and leg snap. Hit! Hit! Good, good. Step! Right! Left! 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 Right! Left! Bill Johnson is the offensive coach and the 49ers' biggest fan. He started with his team as a rookie, and he's never left. Over a long career, he's developed a fierce loyalty and an intense pride in the 49ers. Now, two disastrous seasons have become, for him, a personal insult. This year, Bill Johnson is dedicated to building a winning team. His determination is the spirit of the 49ers. <laughs> For any team, the one man essential to victory is the quarterback. John Brody, an eight-year veteran, has never quite fulfilled his promise. The number two quarterback is George Myra. Beginning his second year, he has less than two hours of professional experience. We run in our lakes here quicker. This year, they are drilled by a special part-time coach, Y.A. Tittle. Retired as a player, he's a wealthy man with a prosperous insurance business. But his first love is football, and the memories of 18 years still intrude into his consciousness. All right, that's fine. But I was just saying, here's what we got to do to do it. We've got to use the aggressive. We got to use aggressive block on it because because we can't get it out there and get back deep enough. And then if you if you stay up short, the linemen are going to be surrounding you, and you're going to be uncomfortable with all those guys around you. Give him plenty of room back here now. He's got to get out of here. Ten years, Y.A. Tittle is the star quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. But in 1960, at the age of 34, he's considered too old for the game. Traded to the New York Giants for an obscure guard, he defies time for three more years. He leads the Giants to two divisional championships. Age doesn't come gracefully in pro football. It finally catches Tittle late on a Sunday afternoon. After 17 years of brilliance, his final season is a bitter disappointment. You got to get out of there then. Hey, once you hit seven yards, stop. Then the play acting is over. You got to get out of there then. You got to move. These guys are coming. There's nobody on them. After they check and bump them, then you got to run. And I mean run. Go! <laughs> A 49er consumes, among other things, two and a half pounds of meat a day, one and a half quarts of milk, two potatoes, 
a pint of ice cream, and half a loaf of bread. Over 6,000 calories. Nuns, on the other hand, eat less. And of course, the off guard, we want you inside and cut this man. A long day on the practice field is over. But there's another side to pro football. It's a game in which 11 men must function as a precision machine. Each player must know his assignment for 100 or more offensive plays. The most valuable piece of equipment is the playbook. If it's lost, the fine may be as high as $300. You did, uh, this is the same identical block as you make when you're on the onside on a ram play. And it's going to work out real good for us. There's no easy way to master this game. Each man must know the plays, the codes, and the signals. And the game has a language all its own. Now, the off guard, who is the key on this particular play, on the 30 blunt, hit him with a head inside, whereas over here, you hit him inside, but you hit him low in an attempt to cut him. Now, get yourself, when this play is called, get yourself a good split and go into the man and turn him. Don't release him back behind the line of scrimmage. Make him go around the block. At the end of summer, there's a quiet optimism at St. Mary's. The 49ers are ready for the invasion of the Cleveland Browns. Imagination in image making. What you've just seen here is a symbolic demonstration of 3M Company's latest breakthrough in image making. Thank you, Jimmy. This discovery makes it possible for the 3M speed copier to turn out 40 copies a minute. Until recent years, there were three common ways to reproduce images, printing, photography, and by hand. 3M has applied imagination to all three. For reproducing images by hand, 3M has developed many new art materials. In photography, 3M Company makes important contributions through Revere instant loading cameras and Dynachrome film cartridges. Hold it, Jimmy. To copy photos and drawings for printing, 3M photomechanical film was developed. Then 3M invented the fast, accurate color key proofing system and also produced a pre-sensitized plate that gives more consistent quality for fine offset printing. 3M introduced the Thermofax copying machine in 1949, the first major advance in image making for decades. Come on, Jimmy. Then came other new developments, including this automatic 3M dry photo copier. While Jimmy makes a copy of this picture, let me show you a copy from a leading competitive machine. It looks like this. On the other hand, the 3M dual spectrum copier produces a much clearer, sharper black and white copy from just about any original, even including books. Look at the difference. Dual spectrum copying is a new and remarkable achievement. Another example of imagination in image making from 3M Company. 3M Company. What won't they think of next? San Francisco Sunday will end here, at Kizar Stadium. 100 yards of green lawn will become a stage for the classic drama that is pro football. It'll be a comedy or a tragedy, depending upon the players. This morning, only one thing is certain. The crowd that arrives in a few hours will go home weighing about 53,000 pounds more the result of having consumed four miles of hot dogs and 4,500 gallons of beer.
For the Cleveland Browns, there's just a 45-minute bus ride from a motel. The last few minutes of quiet before the battle. Once in San Francisco, only the college men, the alumni of Stanford and Cal, talked about their teams. Now the 49ers have an alumni of their own, the people of San Francisco. You get it, baby. The 49ers will play this game without their first-string quarterback, John Brody. The doctor said I have something wrong with my sack really had. I really don't know. I don't. He said he's not positive yet either. I, there's no. I can't feel anything. You know, in my back. I, when I reach back there, I, feel, I can't bend over. kick off. The long prelude is over. Blanton Collier, the Browns head coach, will start the game with last year's championship team almost unchanged. In his two years as 49er head coach, Jack Christensen has built a powerful defensive team. Bill Johnson's offensive unit has been the 49ers weakness. But now with new backfield men, and weeks of hard training. Johnson is convinced he can win. Today, the 49ers will be beaten. This is the story of one game and how it was lost. Plagued by his own inexperience, 49er quarterback George Myra calls a cautious, conservative game. He'll try to keep the ball on the ground, but his runners can't break loose. All right, now let's get that. That, that, that thing looked like me. No, it was good. I, 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 I could have got him good. Move! 84! Go! 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 Go!
throughout the afternoon, the Browns will control the game on the ground. But they'll score with a long pass. Touchdown. As the Browns discover 49er weaknesses, they'll vary their attack, forcing San Francisco to abandon its planned strategy. behind the 49ers must play catch-up football they take to the air behind an inexperienced line Myra is rushed his receivers are covered for a series of ground-gaining passes. The 49ers make only isolated completions. Not enough for a needed momentum. We'll stay with the same thing we're going at. We will be all right. Got plenty of time. In pro football, the defense does more than meet an attack. It must wage a continuous counter-offensive. Jim Johnson, the 49er defensive back, can reverse the course of a game with one sprint. As the half ends, the effect of the 49ers' lone touchdown is erased by second-string quarterback Jim Ninowski. One brief interlude, the tension and violence of the afternoon are broken. said a man must have the killer instinct these are aggressive emotional men who spend all afternoon hitting and being hit an afternoon of playing war like Leroy Kelly absorbs a day-long beating for those rare moments when he breaks away, those few seconds when it's his game alone, when he cannot be stopped. There's a personal reward that has nothing to do with the score or a paycheck. And for the runner, there are moments of personal despair. Leroy Kelly fumbles. And now the glory is seized by the 49ers, Kermit Alexander.
one break can ignite a team. There's one quarter left. There's still hope. And then, man, when you go by this guy, give him a, give him a show. Give him, give him, give him but a boost. Just a boost. Yeah. See it slip by and, and steal off the back. On. And then continue. Rim, ten, five. The measure of a pro team is endurance. The ability to pound away at the defense all afternoon. Because a game is won at the line of scrimmage. One down at a time, yard by yard. In the pro game, a hole in the line is only a split second when a lineman may be off balance. Sometimes, it's not even that. And the runner must find his own opening. The strength of the Browns lies in their depth, in a second team that rivals the first. Jim Nanowski would be a starting quarterback on many other clubs. And Cliff McNeil, only a second-string flanker, is one of the fastest runners in the league. In the game's final minutes, the idea of defeat is set in. It's an idea that Bill Johnson can't accept. Like we need another fumble. By the fourth quarter, fatigue and exhaustion are part of the game. But the pro ignores time clocks and discouragement. The 49ers still fight for a cause that cannot be won. Their drive begins too late. The San Francisco offense will score only this once. determination drives the 49ers toward a last futile gesture. a game that is played and won by teams. But defeat is a personal thing. <laughs> this was one Sunday in pro football. A single page in a story that began centuries ago. A story written by men who have found in a sport a demanding measure for their own courage and ability. at the same angle right in here and kick the guy on out. Defeat is for one afternoon, an afternoon that's passed. It was just one battle in a campaign. This is a new week, and there's only one game that matters now, the one you play next Sunday. And this time, you know you'll win. <laughs> Kicking a linebacker out there. 
Your head's inside, you turn right out there on him. Run it again, run it again. Take him on, Gary, take him in. Come on, Gary. Go ahead, stick it out. One more. Even. Set. Stand. 25. Go. Cut it in. Go hard, go hard. Go hard. Go. All right, run it again. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Did you realize where you were last time? Grab your jersey, Mike. Grab your jersey. Step. Step. Turn those legs. Turn those legs. Good. That's good, Mike. And on the inside eye, or six feet, right? They're going to run 25 traps from a five-foot split. They're going to run 21 ramps. And that's it. Pro Football Mayhem on a Sunday Afternoon was presented by 3M Company, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, a worldwide company with a world of new ideas for you.